Using Lambda expressions in your code can be very beneficial, especially if you decide to take Lambda expressions as a function parameter. So let's assume that you have a function and you want to make something repeat. Actually, let's call it line logger. And you want something to kind of lo log various different lines over and over and over. And so what you could do is you could take, you know, a message that is a string. And then perhaps if you wanted some logs to very basically kind of look like this, you want a bunch of these kind of lines separating your logs just for maybe because you have really chatty logs you could do something like this you could say repeat five times and then you pass in a little lambda expression say print line and then let's go ahead and put in one two three four four five six seven eight of these lines and let's do that twice and then what we'll do is do print line our message now this works pretty well so anytime we want to use this, we can say line logger and say hello there. And then if we run this down in our output window, what we're going to see down here is we're going to see that hello there is printed out. Maybe this is useful to kind of help break up your logs for a visual aspect or whatever. But sometimes that can be not what we want to do. And there's a way we can actually make this much more uh, in tune with um, being able to do anything we really want inside of here. What if we want to provide not one message, but we want to provide two messages. So let's go message two, two string. Now we're going to come in here. We're going to say print line message two. We're in this again. We get our message one message two. Uh, and it looks like we're messaging message two up here. Of course, we forgot to add that to the parameter list. Hello again. And when we run this this time, we're going to see hello again. Now, the problem is, as we continue to grow this and our requirements improve and increase, what we're going to run into is a situation where our, we're just becoming overloaded here. And what we really want to do is be able to have a way for us to print this kind of this block at the top and the block in the bottom, and then whatever we want right here in the middle. And so, yeah, we could build our own string. So just leave it at one string. We could build our own string up here, and I could do this. I can kind of maybe kind of do this like a little weird, you know, I could do this thing up here where I do like a new line thing, and I kind of got there. But then it starts getting really hacky as soon as I want to get anything else kind of done in there. But there's a way we can solve this with Lambda expressions. And so what we can do, is what we're going to do is I'm going to call this block. And this is, again, this is the name of the variable. It's called uh, it's called block. And then the, what type of it's going to be, it's going to be a lambda expression. It's not going to have any parameters. And uh, it's just going to go return a unit. So again, remember, let's go ahead and take a, take a brief review here. We have the input type, which is right here. That's going to be there's no nothing input type, so it's no parameters. And then the Lambda has a return type. And what is that return type? Uh, that return type is gonna be unit, so it's not gonna do anything. And again, the name of it is just called block. And the reason why we're calling it block here is because it's gonna be a block of code. And so this is a block, and so I can get rid of this. Now what I can do is just invoke this block, since this is basically just a function. I'm saying, hey, this is a function I wanna do. And so what I can do now is I can get rid of this code here, and I can actually just do this. now. Of course, you're wondering, where did the parentheses go? So I could just do exactly this, and then I need to put my code block in there. But what you're going to see here is this little squiggly, and it's going to say, hey, you know what? You can go ahead and move the lambda argument out of the parentheses. It's just a convention that uh, is allowed inside of Kotlin. So now I can just say anything I want here. I can say print line message one. I could say two. I could say three. You know, I could... I could do something like this. I could run this. I could even put I could even put my own loop inside of here. I could say repeat you know five times. I could do my own lambda express, you know, I could cuz that repeat thing takes out its own lambda expression. Repeat is part of the Kotlin standard library by the way. And if we run that again, what we'll see now is we'll see message 1 2 3 4 5 repeated right here in the middle all separated by our top and our bottom parts of our line. So this, now we've, what this has allowed us to do is create a much more extensible, extensible function. So we now have a function called line logger that I can pass in whatever I want. I can do 20 different logs in here. I can do 10 different logs and it'll help me be able to find perhaps my logs inside of a logger. That's a very naive and simple example, but it shows you the power of basically delegating the responsibility back to the caller. So I'm yielding this call. So right here, this is, I'm going to be yielding whatever happened here 
to execute what's going to happen here. So what's let's think about this for a second. First thing that happens is we call line logger. Line logger says, hey, no problem. Cool. I have a block. And then the first line of code executes. It says, all right, well, I'm going to print this thing five times. And then now after that, what I have now is I have this little block of code. And this little block of code right here, I need to run. And that little block of code is this stuff right here. It's whatever's in between these two brackets up here. And it's going to run that block of code. And then after that's done, it's going to go ahead and return back down. And it's going to run the next three, next five iterations of this repeat loop. So it's basically going inside of here, running this, hopping back out, doing something out here, and then hopping back in and finishing up down here. And so that's a very simple way that you can actually implement a Lambda expression inside of a function.